How you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out Black by Pearl Jam. Incredible song on loads of different levels. It's a great one for beginners because you can play it with just easy open chords, but more advanced guitar players can get into the bar chord grips and have a look at a D-shaped bar chord and some little filly things. I'm not going to go through all of the intricate lead lines that are going on through the verses. If you want some more details on that, I have a lesson called uh, Hendrix Mayfield Rhythm Fills over on the website. It is almost all kind of based on that idea so that if you check out that lesson then give the track a listen you'll probably pick up a lot of that stuff so let's start off by looking at the basic chord progression then we'll go through and talk a bit about the rhythm and then we'll revisit the more complex uh, intro parts with the bar chords and stuff so the basic progression for the verses is bar of e bar of a bar of e a e a and then two bars of e that's the basic sequence there for the verses so Starting off with a regular E chord, you have the sheets of empty A chord, untouched E of A. Is that nice? E spread out B A me as her E chord once did. And the second bar of E, same thing again. E her echo revolved a e around her soul to a and e, e the a east as e chord is turned and there's a second bar of e and now we go into the chorus see all that I second bar of c was every minor for two bars no she I know she seek me all that she e minor for two bars and now my teacon hands chief perceive the clouds of what was every e minor and then back to D and then down to C tattooed every minor so interesting thing there with the chorus part it's got the two bars of C two bars of E minor two bars of C two bars of E minor but then we go into this section where we've got the D chord and it goes D C E minor D C E minor D C E minor just one bar on each so it's like a three bar chord progression which is very unusual most chord progressions are four eight twelve sixteen bars or whatever so having this three bar sequence is a little bit unusual I think it works incredibly well there's only a couple of variations actually in the song the chorus the second chorus is extended a little bit um, so you'll need to have just have a listen to it you'll quite clearly hear hopefully if you're listening properly the little section where it jumps between the D and then back to the C again and other than that that whole outro section is still based around that little three uh, chord sequence that uh, <laughs> Still, 
still just D, C, and E minor. I will take you through and show you that as well. But before we get to any of the fancy stuff, the first thing that you want to remember with a song like this is not playing too much. It's not like having a chord progression where you're going to use, you know, uh, <laughs> It's, it's not that kind of a tune. It's a little bit more playful, a bit more curious than that. And I think one of the things that you should be thinking about when you're playing a song like this is making sure you stay in time, but thinking about playing less and supporting the lyrics and thinking of it a little bit more sensitively than just like having a set pattern. If you struggle with that, it's going to be okay to have a pattern. So you could pick whatever pattern you feel comfortable with. But if you keep your hand moving, one and two and three and four, and all down strokes, one and two and three and four, and as long as you're keeping aware of where the beat is and you keep your hand moving like that, you can kind of strum where it feels good, so long as you stay in time. So, sheets of empty canvas, touch sheets of twain. You don't want too much there. You don't want a big strumming pattern in that section. So it can just be really sparse. There's other little fills going on in the band. Now, here I need to talk a little bit about the rhythm. So the second half of that chorus section, all of the chords are pushed, so they come on the and after four. And it does make a bit of a difference, particularly if you're playing in a band. That'd be really important because all of the band are kind of jumping on that uh, push. It's called a push. I always feel like it's kind of pushing me in the back is a nice way to remember that thing. So, uh, if I can get the pitching even slightly right. Two, three, four. showed you a little bit where it changes where it goes back to the d one time it just happens the once in that uh, second chorus the big takeaway from this part is the push in the chorus it really adds a bit of life to it however if you're a beginner and you just get into grips with your open chords and you're still kind of that's the focus of your attention there is changing between the chords you don't want to be thinking about doing a push yet okay you just want to be stick to playing on the beat it's a lovely song to be able to play along with. Again, it's fairly easy, relaxed tempo. It's good for this idea of keeping the hand moving all of the time and then just playing when you feel like you need to. It gives you plenty of space for making chord changes if you're a beginner. And it's a lovely one just getting that vibe and playing along, I think, is a real special thing. So don't be afraid of doing that and uh, keeping things simple while you're a beginner and knowing that there are things to learn as you progress. Songs like this I would think of as a nice grower. You could play it with just the basic chords, very easy strumming. As you get better, you can start to incorporate embellishments, the pushes in the chords, bar chords even, uh, different bar chord shapes that are maybe not even like intermediate level stuff. So it is a sort of song that can grow with you a little bit as you develop. So let's make things a little bit more complicated now and check out the intro chord. So the first chord that we need is an E chord. It's a bar chord. So instead of playing E down here, you can also play it up here. First finger is in the seventh fret of the fifth string. Third finger covers strings two, three, and four. Thinner string is muted. You can choose to play the thicker string if you want. 
it sounds cool. I don't think it's used in the very intro though. So you might want to keep it closed just to the tip of your first finger there, muting that string. So that's the first chord. And then the second chord in the song, as you know, is an A chord, but we're not going to play an A even like this, which is another common kind of bar chord one. You might use that for the verses. You probably saw me play it like this, which is a kind of lazy man's way of playing with a thumb over the top. If you're new to bar chords, you'd be using this A, but the one you're using at the beginning is this. Now, the parent shape is this. It's a chord that I find a little bit tricky to just jump to. I can do it if I really concentrate, but I definitely wouldn't want to be doing it on stage in front of loads of people, unless I've done loads of practice on it. But the point is that it's a little bit tricky and it's not what's used on the original recording anyway. It's this, okay, which is an A, I guess it's a A sus2 technically would be its name. There's the E. Third finger is moving to the uh, ninth fret third string. Little finger is going to the tenth fret second string. There's the root note here on the fourth string. That's the note A. We've got the low E there, I think, ringing out there as well. I think I can hear that. So that's the, the chord shape. The, about, the way he's moving between them is a little bit loose, and it's look at, listening to some live versions. It's not exactly the same all of the time. I don't think it needs to be. The common kind of theme in the movement between the E to the A is this. It's this. Okay, so it's just from the E, moving third finger onto the point to get these two notes here at the seventh fret, and then laying it back down. Where you definitely hear this B ring out the very first time. Now I can hear a little filly thing there, but it's not very clear. There's been a radio effect added to the guitar as well. Depends on how fussy you want to be. I wasn't like, oh, it's an intrinsic part of the riff there, so I'm not going to copy it down. But there's a little riff there if you wanted to cop that between the A and the E. Back to the E. Second time through, I'm definitely hearing this C sharp note. And here's an interesting little approach to this chord. So again, rather than doing that, which is just really all kinds of horrible, I'm fairly sure in the live clip I've seen, but the middle string is muted here. The second string is muted by the underneath of the third finger. So you get seven, no, nothing on the thicker string, seven, seven, nine, mute, nine. Lift up little finger, I think, because it's this kind of riff has got lots of embellishments in it, and you can take it to whatever level you want. If you really want to nail this song, then it's going to require quite a little bit of listening and a little bit more forensic examination into exactly what's going on. I always feel like there's some songs where I really want to do that, where it's really important for the essence of the whole song. For me, this song, the intro is really cool, it's great, and I wanted to learn roughly what it was, but those little minor details, if I'm playing it, I just want to play it. I don't want to spend ages learning exactly these tiny little details. I don't think they're the, the important part of the tune. The feeling of the tune, what you're putting into it, is the important part. So, the intro. One, two, three, four. The very first time he just does one, two, then he lifts up the third finger, four, E, and, so down, up, down, to the A. Make it too busy at that particular at that point just before the scene you need to leave a space for that gorgeous bass to enter it's incredible the way i don't i don't even know how it's played actually but it sounds incredible but incredible best bass entry of all time i'd i'd say especially well definitely in rock that rock sphere it's incredible anyway so that would be an approach to playing the intro. You could choose to play open chords if you don't know how to play the bar chords. You don't feel like you have to struggle your way through this. If you're new to the whole guitar thing, then stick with playing your easy open chords.
you, you, it, there's no rules for this stuff and I'd be very sure the guys in Pearl Jam would be encouraging you to make your own music out of their song if you were doing a cover. Like, there's always a benefit for learning things in great detail for the ear training aspect, the learning to find new sounds, new techniques, all of that sort of stuff. But when you're doing a cover or trying to play a song, really trying to find your own voice, I think, is a fairly important part of the picture. Now, the rest of the song, if you want to start looking at more complicated things... You've got the E to the A. You probably don't want to be using that one all of the way through the song. Now, you can definitely play A like that. I tend to play A like this with the thumb over the top. Again, this is definitely not beginner stuff. This is late intermediate kind of level, I think. The idea being, I can do there's little twiddles that I can add to it if I want. But you don't want to, again, you don't want to go getting too busy in a song like this. You don't want to add too much stuff. Leave space for the melody. That's important. But for me, it feels nice to have this. I just like the sound of that A chord from here, A, especially. That kind of thing. You should experiment with the different chords that you know, what you feel comfortable with. More advanced guitar players, definitely checking out some of the lead fills in it is a really nice thing to do. Um, the one other thing I'll mention, just because it's nice, especially if you're playing it on your own, beginners might want to have a go at this, might be a little tricky, is the... Okay, just open first, third, first, open, first, open, all on the second string. It's like a theme that comes up. Now, the interesting thing is the way it blends with the open chords. Okay, you get this D chord, which is like, it's a D6 really, I guess, if you put that third finger down as well, it would be a D6, but you just want those three strings, the open D, second fret and the third string, open B. Then, lovely C major 7 just like a regular C but with the first finger lifted off so you get that open B E minor D C major 7 E minor It's a nice little way of introducing that melody line. Of course, if you're doing it in a band setting, you're definitely looking at segregation of parts so that you've got a more a rhythm and lead thing going on with this song and trying to weave them together. Again, it becomes much more important to listen at that point if you happen to be playing this in a band. You want to be really aware of what the other guitar player is playing so you don't get busy when they're busy. You really want to be complementing each other and trying to make it... Remember that the listener doesn't just hear you. I think that's a big problem for a lot of people in kind of when they're learning this sort of style is that they really focused on what they're doing instead of what the listener hears, which is a combination of all of the instruments. So trying to become less about yourself and more about the whole picture, I think, is an important thing, particularly in this sort of style where there's multiple guitar parts. It's all about the song. It's a song-driven thing. It's not a guitar technical fest kind of thing. So anyway... I think that's about all I can share with you for this song today. I really hope you enjoyed this. I definitely need to do some more Pearl Jam. Just, I can't remember what triggered this song. In fact, I do remember what triggered this song. My social media assistant, Lorraine, said, hey, you should do more Pearl Jam. You haven't done Black from your songbook yet. And I did it. And then it just tripped me back into, I used to love Pearl Jam. Well, I still love Pearl Jam. I just haven't listened to them for ages. But what songs would you like me to do? That's the point of all of that conversation. What are the songs that you would like me to do lessons on by Pearl Jam? I think I've already done a live. Did I do Jeremy or I just learned it and I didn't teach it? I love Jeremy. I think that's my favorite Pearl Jam song. So if there isn't a lesson on that, there will be soon. Uh, what other songs would you like me to do? Is it all that early stuff, 10, or you like the later stuff too? Shall I be? In fact, the other weird one I've done is... Um, Longing to be to belong, the Eddie Vedder ukulele song. <laughs> That's a great Eddie Vedder, such a killer, just a genius singer songwriter. Anyway, 
If you happen to be over on YouTube, I really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button, slapping me a like, and leave me a comment with that song as I just talked about. I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You'll take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.